Welcome to ESPN's Champ Week, presented by Principal. This is the original. The Southern Conference Tournament has been around since the 1921 season. No one can say that. And tonight, we get a rematch of last year's title game, East Tennessee State and UNCG. East Tennessee State, led by DeZonte Bradford, the SoCon Player of the Year. He has what Francis Alonzo wants, a trip to the NCAA Tournament. It's the Buccaneers and the Spartans to decide it tonight. Nestled in the Blue Ridge Mountains in beautiful Asheville, North Carolina. And with that, we welcome your courtside. Tom Hart alongside Sean Farnham. There's no better time in the calendar year than Champ Week. Here we are. Somebody's cutting down the nets tonight. Look, you and I are both going to the SEC Tournament after this. There's seven, eight teams right now that already know they're in the NCAA tournament field, even if they lose. But for these two programs, they're 40 minutes away from having that game that they'll show their grandchildren when they got to climb the ladder, cut down the nets, and go to the NCAA tournament. Their backcourt is led by the two stars that we've already seen. You think about Bradford, the conference player of the year. He loves to curl and attack the basket. Francis Alonso at 28 points in last year's title game. He'll take less points and a win tonight. Steve Forbes, the head coach of East Tennessee State, was there last year. The Buccaneers, Wes Miller's the head coach at UNCG. He hasn't been to the tournament since he played for North Carolina. They're both standing by with our Stormy Bonantoni. Coach Forbes, your team took home the championship hardware a year ago, went to the NCAA tournament after a win in this game. How excited are your players for a chance to repeat? Well, all you got to do is look around and see all the fans we have here. Everybody's excited, but we know we got a great opponent tonight. We have a ton of respect for West Miller and his team. We know it's going to be a hard fought game. Thank you, Coach. Thank you. And there are two sides to this story, Coach Miller. You know how hard it was for your players to leave this building empty-handed a year ago. How has that experience changed their approach and focus in this game? Well, it's changed our approach since it happened last year. I thought it motivated us throughout the offseason, and it's good that we've had a little experience, but so have they. Thank you, Coach. What's the motivation like? The runner-up trophy from last year sits on Wes Miller's desk. He sees it every time he walks into his office. The players see it every time they come in for a meeting. This could be... The biggest meeting they've ever had. A chance to get back to the NCAA tournament. UNCG as a program has been only two other times. ETSU has made ten trips to the big dance. They lost to Florida in the first round last year. Tom, you look out on this floor right now. East Tennessee State University, ETSU, the Bucks. They come out. They're fired up. They're trying to get their crowd involved. And C. Forbes is right. Johnson City has come out in large numbers to support their program here tonight as they try to get back to the NCAA tournament. Just 60 miles over I-26 and over the mountain to get to Asheville, North Carolina. But it's a brand new roster in many ways. Seven newcomers that Steve Forbes has assimilated into the program. A bevy of transfers for the Buccaneers. They're picked to finish fourth in the preseason poll. UNCG won the regular season. And here we go for the 97th time, the Southern Conference Championship. If you like defense, you're going to love this game. Their offensive numbers look good. Both teams average over 70 points per game, Tom. I think the first team to 60 tonight is going to win, though, because their defense has been great here in the SoCon tournament so far. Right off the bat, it's a three ball from Francis Alonzo, one of the best shooters in the SoCon. He drills his first. He had an off shooting night last night, but he hit the game winner with 20 seconds to go as UNCG beat Wofford in the semifinals. When you talk about Alonzo, you're talking about a player that ranked seventh in the nation in made three pointers on the season. Desante Bradford answers. That's your SOCON player of the year, a thousand point score out of Humboldt, Tennessee. This is James Dickey, one of the best defenders in the league, and he has it stripped on his way to the hoop. 11 seconds on the shot clock. Tommy, we talked about him in the open. The best players on the floor are the two guards. Alonzo from three has space, late closeout, and this is not the best aspect of Bradford's game. He shoots just 31% from beyond the arc, but he's a capable catch-and-shoot three-point shooter. You've got to run him off that three-point line. Jordy Kuyper gets free and gives it up at point-blank range. And so in the middle, it's Demetrius Troy. Troy had 17 in the last matchup between these two. They split the regular season matchups. Both teams won at home. Jalen McLeod, little wide. 
And Alonso comes away with the rebound. He's a junior from Malaga, Spain. His family has been stateside the last few weeks. They had to board a plane this morning and fly back to Europe. He said, my only hope is that they get ESPN2 on the flight over. There's another triple. This time it's Troy. It's a phenomenal start for the Spartans. Defensively, you see this, this press. It's designed to simply take time off the clock. It's not designed necessarily to create turnover opportunities, although it did that last night. UNCG knocked off Wofford. They forced four shot clock violations and one 10-second backcourt violation in the second half. Shot clock winding down. Bradford with three on the clock. And it's another miss from deep, but an offensive board. Troy nearly stole it back. And an injury issue for East Tennessee State. Bo Hodges at midcourt walking his way back towards the offensive end. I think he was nursing an ankle after he went down. And so Hodges will come out for a moment. Devontavia's pain is instant offense off the bench for ETSU as Hodges goes to visit the trainer. Payne is essentially Steve Forbes' version of Lou Williams for the Clippers, Jamal Crawford's entire NBA career, a guy that can come off the bench and really can score the basketball. Here's McLeod probing, and he's able to lay it off the window. Jalen McLeod's got a bucket. He didn't make a two-point shot in the previous matchup between these two teams. And a whistle underneath and a foul. First four minutes of a game like this, Tom, you have to handle your emotions, right? You're excited. You, you're playing for a championship, but the championship will not be won in the first four minutes. So you've got to get through those nerves. You've got to settle yourself down and start playing your level of basketball, what you're accustomed to. ETSU has not really found its rhythm as of yet, and yet they're only down by three. The lob to Dickey is a little too strong. The history of this tournament is fascinating. It goes all the way back to the 1921-22 season. Some of the best players in college basketball history have played in this. Steph Curry for Davidson, of course. Dick Grote, National League MVP with the Pirates, played in this. So did Jerry West, the logo, and Hot Rod Hundley back when West Virginia was in this conference. There's pain as scheduled. You have to have an awareness of where number 11 in blue is. East Tennessee State University is really good at pinching on drive. Somebody get a piece of that? They say no. It was a well short from Demetrius Tony. First miss for UNCG. Wes Miller knows what it's like to have success in the postseason. He was on North Carolina's 2005 national championship team. Became a starter in the 2006 season as a walk-on for Roy Williams. Dangerous pass that time. For Jermaine Long, that is not a pass Steve Forbes wants to see. Payne going to work. And it's ripped down by Kyron Galloway, the 6'8 sophomore. Dickey. A little unorthodox on the offensive end. On the defensive end, Sean, he had eight blocks in the last matchup between these two. Tied at eight early on. A lot of emotion in the building and in the locker room from Steve Forbes. You'll hear that next. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Principal. Investments, retirement, insurance, and Audi. journey. We started this journey in June, right? Peter's from the South Sudan, you're from Serbia, Nashville, Texas, little Humboldt, it's a player of the year right over there, Humboldt, Tennessee. Okay? It's a journey. Okay? But now it's coming to an end. Now it's coming to an end. Now is the time to make your mark. This is what they thought of you, fellas. Where's Jerome? Jerome. This is what they thought of you this year. Fourth place. Fourth place. Okay? Fourth place. This is what they thought. Well, tonight ain't for fourth place. Tonight's for all of them. And here's the thing. You already got what they want. Don't give it to them. 
Never ever in life, never ever in life, give something that you want, that you deserve. Don't give it away. Make them take it. In an hour and a half now, let's go climb those nets. Yeah. Yeah. The defending champs, ETSU under head coach Steve Forbes. He has been all over the college coaching world. He was a magnificent junior college coach after he was on Bruce Pearl's staff at Tennessee. And so, Sean, he has that experience of taking a collection of guys who have never played together before, who barely know each other when they show up on campus, and molding them into a team. And, and he does it a different style. I mean, they do their one and done. It's just a reverse one and done. They get the graduate transfer that plays one year and then moves on, but yet he gets them to play together. And the, the best way to see that is how they're attached defensively. Peter Jerkin is one of those. He transferred from Indiana. The seven-footer from the South Sudan, who he just referenced, gets his first bucket, and ETSU is on a 7-0 run. Uh, and Jerkin has been starting a majority of the season. Recently had moved out of the starting line at back to coming off the bench. He is an incredible story. We'll dive into that a little bit later. Galloway gets off his first triple. ETSU went on a run in the semifinal against Furman. They're trying to do it again. And a foul on the floor. And that'll go against Isaiah Miller. Late in the shot clock, Jerkin's size is problematic. Even for a player like Dickey, who's so good at blocking shots and led the conference in that category, keeps the ball high and finishes with a soft touch. Peter Jerkin is 25 years old. He originally signed with Indiana. Tom Crean had him in the same recruiting class as Yogi Ferrell. Matt Craig of The Athletic wrote a fantastic bio on Peter Jerkin this season as Miller picks up his second. That talked about the fact that he came so far and he's worked so hard to even get to this point. He's a seven footer in high school. He played for the 5'3 Muggsy Bogues. Eventually became a father figure and had Peter move into his house. Both of his parents have since passed away. He battled injuries at Indiana, barely played over two seasons. And hardly played last year for East Tennessee State. He's a sixth year, 25 year old senior. Hodges left alone. And Alonzo comes away with it. Alonzo scored in the first possession for UNCG. Nothing since. Well, you see the tempo and the pace of this game is starting to slow down a little bit. And that's why as quickly as they play, it's the defense. And whichever team is staying true to their principles and executing that in the floor, disrupting the offensive flow is going to win the championship tonight. Here's Dickey. And we've got a violation against Bo Hodges. It's a cylinder call. Hodges was in Dickey's space, and that'll be the first in Hodges. I thought it was pretty good defense, I'm just being honest. I know the cylinder rule, and obviously I know you cannot straddle the leg, but in a post-up situation when the big turns sideways, you, you can't just give up real estate. Alonzo doubled, coughs it up. Here come the Buccaneers with numbers. McLeod. Got a little fancy with it and gives it up. Alonzo transition, beautiful feed. And a fantastic finish by Malik Massey. What great hands defensively by Troy, though, to get that whole thing started. That ends a four-minute drought, and UNCG can go back to the press. Would a slower tempo favor one team over the other tonight? UNCG. E ETSU is at its best when the game is frenetic and it's going up and down the floor. Long got his man turned around, tried to wrap it around a jerk. And, and sometimes, Tommy, you know, we're talking about it, quick hands, and look, Troy just with the rip. Alonzo with the throw ahead and the easy finish. You've got to take advantage of those opportunities when you have them. What a great pass. Delivered it on time, shielding and protecting and finishing at the rim. Alonzo running off screens. They call him the magician back in his hometown. Thought he could have, should have had a whistle on that three attempt. Bradford. Those are the kind of shots I think you could live with if you're the Spartans. Quick rush, transition three, then set up your offense. Force the Buccaneers to have to defend you side to side.
Alonzo again changes direction, tries to step through. Eight seconds left on the shot clock. Interesting today at shoot around. Wes Miller, game number 34 of the season, put in new out of bounds plays this morning. And they call it L. This isn't it. I think that's the Spirit Fingers. I think that's a Wolfpack play coming from the Carolina guy. <laughs> Wes Miller's done a tremendous job in this program, Tom. Where this program was, and even early in his coaching career to where it's gotten, has been impressive. West Coast Conference Championship semifinal coming up later on tonight on ESPNU. It's out to Vegas, BYU and St. Mary's. Gonzaga and San Francisco currently in action on ESPN. Three seconds in the shot clock. Alonzo steps through, took a bump. And ETSU comes out of there with it. Alonzo just one for five from the floor now. Aladdin Armas inside. Tom, we just talked about the WCC. Dick Vitale's on the call of the game right now on ESPN. He was hanging with J-Lo. That's what he was doing in Las Vegas. I went to the early girl eatery and had some great farm to kitchen eggs this morning. You think J-Lo had a scattering report on Mark Few's squad? Oh, let me tell you. <laughs> I wonder how much he was talking about A-Rod and baseball. Here's Asante Bradford. Nice look. And Armis lays it in. Armis coming off of his first career double-double last night against the Paladins of Furman. And great hands, and, and he's really the bully on the basketball court for the Buccaneers. Dickey gets tied up, ball on the floor. Possession arrow pointing this way. The one thing you know about Steve Forbes' team is there's no stop. So they're going to keep coming at him time and time again. Defensively, offensively. If you put the ball down on the floor in the post, as we've talked about, their guards are pinching and digging. They're trying to get a hand and a deflection on the ball so they can get a run out and score in transition. Steve Forbes replaced Murray Bartow at ETSU. Was an assistant with Greg Marshall at Wichita State after two trips to the Junior College National Championship with Northwest Florida State following his time at Tennessee. Balls went to the Elite Eight. They were one point away from going to the Final Four when Forbes was there with Bruce Pearl. Speaking of the tournament, we'll go a little bit deeper into it. We'll go brackets and bubbles when we return. Two-point game here. Joey Brackets is going to join us from the bunker to break down what's next. Dream big. The dream continues. Well, Champ Week is well underway, and here's what's on the line. Championship weekend. Phillips 66 Big 12 title will be decided Saturday, 6 o'clock Eastern. The ACC is going on in Brooklyn, getting underway tomorrow. And the SEC Championship Sunday at 1 o'clock coming from St. Louis. All of those games on ESPN. Let's go to Joe Lenardi live in the Infinity Bracket Bunker. Joe, uh, ACC getting underway tomorrow, including Notre Dame. How does Bonzi Colson's return figure in to their postseason hopes and brackets? All right, Joe, Tom and I are both going to the SEC tournament in St. Louis. And you talk about Bonzi Colson's return, the pending potential return of Michael Porter. What could that do if Missouri goes on a run with Michael Porter in St. Louis?
All right, and then staying with the SEC, Alabama's lost five straight games. It wasn't that long ago that everything looked good for Avery Johnson. How concerned should they be heading into this tournament that their at-large bid might be in danger? Joe, thanks so much for your time. We appreciate it. That's Joe Lenardi live in the Infinity Bracket Bunker. But St. Mary's, Sean? Is St. Mary's in trouble? No. Well, they're not conference. A little bit of yick. Well, look, the strength of their non-conference has never been a positive for Randy Bennett. Four seconds on the shot clock. ETSU with a near steal and a walk. If that's a possession, it's a fresh 30. Got to be a possession, and it will be. Go ahead, and Randy Bennett's not conference schedule. You don't think that'll get in the way? They have some kid wins this year, including well, winning, at home against Gonzaga. Winning against Gonzaga at Gonzaga was a huge win. Sweeping BYU in the regular season of conference play. These are all things that are going to work out in the benefit of Randy Bennett's team, even though a majority of those non-conference wins came against Quadrant Three teams. Yeah, they only have three wins against Q1 and Q2 teams. Here's a drive by Alonzo, cut off again. Dickey to the corner, and Marvin Smith. You can see G just looks a little out of sorts on the offensive end, but another offensive board. And an empty trip. They've only made one field goal the last seven minutes. That's about defense with these two teams and their strengths at that end of the floor. They are very disruptive. Armas cut off. Shot clock is at five. Here's Jermaine Long. Lost his footing. And the ball hit the sideline. Well, we're talking bubble teams. Here's what Joey Brackets has. Last four in. A huge win for Texas over the weekend. USC and your alma mater, UCLA, right there. And currently, as you said, Alabama in still early in the week. Oklahoma State's gone on quite a tear here late. That win against Kansas at home. They swept the Jayhawks this year. UCLA's win against USC, I think, should solidify UCLA in the tournament field, barring something out of the norm at the Pac-12. The Pac-12 conference might be the conference of champions, uh, but this year it has fallen down in a big way. Outside of Arizona, I don't think any team can feel really comfortable right now with where they're at. Not even Arizona State, who had two great non-conference wins against Kansas and Xavier. Meanwhile, for Wes Miller's squad, their star, Francis Alonzo, is only one for seven. He's got three points. He made his first shot, but nothing since. Dickey challenging that one. Eight blocks for Dickey last time these teams met part of a program tying night for UNCG. They broke uh, block 14 ETSU shots. I go with C. Forbes about it today. They said in football parlance, he was just playing spy linebacker on us. Dickey was timing that one. Oh my goodness! Opportunity wasted by Bo Hodges. Back the other way, it's Marvin Smith. And a trip to the line coming for Smith. A lot of activity on the floor right now. Not a lot of achievement. Here's a prime example. Great activity by Hodges. Look at the elevation. You've got to be able to complete that play. He does not. Did you just go John Wooden on us? Yes, a little bit. Speaking of great coaches, as Marvin Smith goes to the line, Everett Case coach at NC State. He also coached here in the SoCon when NC State was in it, and we watch all these teams cutting down nets right now. That was a tradition that was invented by Everett Case. They won the tournament. He wanted a souvenir, so they cut down the nets. They won the SoCon in 1947, and since then, Scissors and ladders have become sponsored items. 
non-sponsored items in this game have been made shot. <laughs> Ever Case, one of the greats in the SOCON. Like Grizel also coached in this league, so did Eddie Cameron. You know him from Cameron Indoor Stadium fame. That guy's pretty good. He's still pretty good. Steph averaged 29 a game on the run to the Elite Eight in 08. Look at Jerkin putting it on the floor. All right, let's have some real talk here. How much do we credit the defense and how much do we credit some tight shooting here in the early going? Both teams combined nine for 28. The quality of shot is not high, so I credit the defense a lot. We watched both these teams last night. They executed at a much more efficient clip. ETSU was able to turn Furman over and get some points that way. 15 points off of 12 turnovers. That one swatted by the seven-footer, Peter Jerkin. Only seven-footer in the SoCon. And he has it poked away. Off to the races. Here's Sykes. Oh, my. Oh, my. And all the numbers and nothing to show for it. Jerkin. Okay, I'm just going to go out on a limb and say, if I'm the player of the year and I get that deep in the paint, I'm shooting the ball. That's what Bradford should have done in that position instead of dropping that one off to a trailing big. Desante Bradford has only three points and one of four shooting. Out front, Burrell, he can rise! He was on the Sports Center Top Ten last night, and he's getting the ETSU faithful into it tonight. That snaps a combined 0 for 13 shooting from the floor. Well, they just weren't getting high percentage looks. That was a high percentage look. look that is where ETSU is at its best. Deflections, throw ahead, let your athletes get after it and go. They slack off Demetrius Troy, and he makes him pay. Team high eight for Troy. He only averages seven a game. And that lead has evaporated for ETSU. Troy, the junior from Raleigh. Troy played at Word of God Academy, same school that produced John Wall, C.J. Leslie, Des Wells. Ripped away by Kanayo Obirapu. He didn't even play in the semifinal game. And a foul on the midcourt trap. That'll go on Massey. It's his first. It's been a lot about the defense, but in championship games, you elevate. You step up, and you try to find some rhythm in a game that hasn't had any. It's 14 all. Can the offenses get going? Welcome back to Asheville, North Carolina. A couple of touchdowns apiece. ETSU and UNCG are tied at 14. We take you back to the last time the Spartans made it to the big dance. Philo Center, Greenville, South Carolina. This is 2001. Chattanooga got a lead late two and a half seconds ago after a timeout. Fran McCaffrey's team set up this. A game winner to David Shuck off the glass. And UNCG was going to the NCAA tournament for just the second time in school history. They had also gone in 96, and so they lost to Cincinnati under head coach Randy Peel when they won the Big South. Wes Miller knew plenty of postseason success playing at the University of North Carolina. 05 National Championship and a pair of ACC tournament titles when he was in uniform. And think about what he's accomplished in the last two years in particular, though. 25 wins was a school record last year. They've got 26 already this year. Uh, most successful two-year run that this program has ever seen. Shot clock at five. McLeod loses it. 
I know his athletic director, Kim Recker, doesn't want us to mention this because she knows the value of Wes Miller, but it won't be long before a lot of major schools understand his value. Right, he's one of the brightest young coaches in all of college basketball. Uh, the way he conducts himself and runs his program is so impressive. He did it the right way. He admits he made mistakes in his early years with the Spartans. And they said he got back to his core values and recruiting kids that are crazy about basketball just like he is. And it's proven in the win results so far. Well, Stormy was listening into that last UNCG huddle. Stormy, what'd you hear? Well, Wes Miller's message to his players was all about fight. He said, we've got him where we want him. Keep pounding. We're supposed to fight, but we take breaks. Why are we taking breaks? Everyone around you needs to do your job. Be strong. You can't let them see you not be strong. He had a great point last night after the win. He was asked if his team was excited about being here, and he said, listen, I know we're excited. We were excited last year, so the, that feeling isn't new. I don't think that our excitement is any less, but our mindset is different. They were just happy to be here last year. Up close look for Armis. He's got a couple of buckets inside. A great job with the screen and the dive right down the middle of the lane, and good pass that time by Bradford. He talked about it, getting to the championship game, there's an excitement of being there when it's unexpected or when you've never experienced it before. This year, this is a group that's been on a mission to find that revenge factor. Mentioned it earlier, but the runner-up trophy was kept by Wes Miller right on his desk. Last year's champs are feeling it now. Jermaine Long with a three to put ETSU back up by two. We talk about Wes Miller, Steve Forbes, three-year run, 76 wins in those three years going into tonight's game, trying to get back-to-back -back NCAA tournament appearances. Third consecutive year in his three years there, they've played in this game. Yeah, he said, that's what I was hired for. This is what we expect, to play meaningful games in March, and this is exactly what we are doing, competing for championships. Isaiah Miller on the other side, tied this one up. Now Bradford off the mark on the drive. And UNCG will have a chance to go back in front. Miller was on the all-freshman team here in the Southern Conference. Great athleticism. They usually look to get him a lob at some point in time to the rim. Shot clock dwindling. It's at six. Troy gives it up. Kuiper for three. Offensive board and Miller's got back-to-back -back buckets. And now the 1-2-2. One, two, two. The Montavious Payne draws the foul. It's the first on Troy. The ACC tournament gets underway tomorrow. They're in Brooklyn. BC and Georgia Tech started off at noon on ESPN2. Then it's Notre Dame, Pittsburgh, Syracuse, and Wake close it out tomorrow night on the U. And I think Bonzi, Colson, as you mentioned, that's the interesting case study for Notre Dame. They should be able to beat Pittsburgh. It's really struggled this year. In a matchup against Virginia Tech, looms out there. Buzz Williams team plays with great energy. They play a little bit smaller, but they cut, they space the floor. Another good year for the Hokies. One more free throw coming for Devontavious Payne, senior from Carbondale, Illinois. He transferred him from John Logan College, one of the top scorers in the junior college ranks a couple years ago. He scored 21 a game. Nine and a half per game this year. He's got five. You mentioned it, different kind of one and done, getting fifth-year transfers, graduate transfers, JUCO transfers. Talking with Steve Forbes about it at shoot-around today, he said, well, really, you can start coaching him in June these days. You get like five months before the season starts. Plenty of time to get to know each other. 3.47 left in the first half. We are all locked at 21 here in Asheville. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Pizza Hut. No one outpieces the hut.
<laughs> all right, gang, here it's 21-all. Uh, they were on the money, as they usually are, Jay and Seth. The two stars that we pointed out early having a tough go of it so far. DeSante Bradford is one for five, and Alonzo is one for seven. Yeah, two, two of them hit the first shot of the game. Since then, they've done absolutely nothing. They've combined just two of 12 shooting from the floor. The numbers have to improve. Whichever one of those two players finds their rhythm first in this game, their team's liable to win the championship. Troy off the mark and look at the activity by Miller. Ankle injury again. I mentioned it in the open of this contest, though. As looking at the ankle injury, Pierce could be down on the floor. Yeah, David Burrell. Burrell. Remember, he injured his ankle in the semifinal game last night against Furman. He's the high riser. It's the same ankle, by the way. He did re-enter that game last night. Yes. In fact, he had a highlight reel dunk that ended up on Sports Center. Steve Forbes will come on over. Burrell, a senior from Milwaukee by way of Southwest Tennessee Community College, took Southwest Tennessee to the Elite Eight of the national tournament. And last year against Florida in the NCAA tournament, he had 11 points in their first round loss. He was a key for them in this championship game last year. They made a defensive switch in this second half. He ended up with a tournament tying record six blocks in a win against UNCG. And you see him limping off. And again, that's the same ankle he tweaked last night when he was on defense and a player was able to get by him driving baseline. Watch number two in blue, and that left ankle oh, gets yeah. rolled. So Jermaine Long will enter in Burrell's place. So make ETSU just a little bit smaller, especially when you consider Burrell plays above the rim. They're swapping out 6-6 for 6-3. Kyron Galloway straight ahead three. He's missed both of his shots from deep, but then a foul on the rebound as Dickey went over the back. Well, I think got a little chippy. You can't slap the ball out of your opponent's hands. I, I'm really surprised that the officials aren't even talking to him. Fouls called on him right here, and then watch him come down here and swipe the ball out like that. You can't do that. Well, he did. It's like you can say anything once. I guess you can do anything <laughs> on the court once. <laughs> you for, could say anything. <laughs> maybe for Dickey, you can do it twice. Because they didn't even talk to him after the first one. Miller getting on the floor after it. And a 10-second violation. That's just not aggressive enough, enough against the press. McLeod passively picks up his dribble before he gets to the, the mid-court line. As you dribble ball at the floor, get it across. Les Miller stressed to us that we're not using this press necessarily to turn people over, although sometimes that happens, but it allows us to get the defenses out of sync and starting their, uh, their offenses out of sync and starting late. Kuiper. And then Dickey gets taken down. McLeod. Got it. Nip and tuck affair continues. Six ties, five lead changes. The awareness on Alonzo when he gets the ball in his hands, though, is making life really difficult for him. It was Bradford on him that time, the player of the year, and Alonzo is just one for eight in this game. Seven-footer wanted to get to the rim. Francis Alonzo, Jr. from Malaga, Spain. Over there, they call him El Mago Malagueño, the magician from Maglaga. Glad you said that because I had no clue where you were going. He said his countrymen are well-versed in what March Madness means. He said they are fired up. A lot of attention over there on the college game, and they will for sure be watching. Bradford with the crossover. Oh, Dickey sends it to the second row. Just lying in wait and working the back line of the defense. This is what he did in the previous matchup. 
you mentioned it's kind of about that linebacker spy action. Look at him cheating on the back of your screen and then at the last second comes over and erases it. The emotion of champ week. The plays at the defensive end of the floor. The two best players, the two best guards. They can't get a clean look tonight. It's a two-point game. Bucks in the lead. It's a 23-21 score, 2.15 to go in the first half from Asheville, North Carolina. And here's a developing story. David Burrell got his ankle taped last night in the semifinal. They're taking him all the way back to the locker room tonight. Alonzo trying to find some offense. This is his second mate. And then Alonzo whistled for the foul, his first personal. It's a 17 foul on UNCG, and so Buccaneers going to the free throw line the rest of this half. Jalen McLeod is a fifth year senior from Fort Worth. He's at the free throw line. Started his college career at Blinn Junior College in Texas. Transferred to Texas Southern where he played for Mike Davis. They went to the NCAA tournament last year, lost to Carolina in the first round. Oh, a reach in by McLeod near Steele. And it turns into a takeaway. Then Alonzo picks up his second. And that is a huge, huge turn of events for UNCG. That's outstanding defense, though, by the Bucs. Steve Forbes' team, they come at you. They are aggressive, they are opportunistic, and they are fighters. So now it's Bradford, the SOCOM player of the year at the free throw line. 74% on the season, one more coming his way. Our Wednesday night NBA doubleheader starts in the Motor City with the Pistons hosting DeMar DeRozan and the Eastern Conference leading Raptors at 8. Then LeBron and the Cavs are in Denver to battle the Nuggets. Our coverage tips with NBA Countdown at 7 p.m. Eastern at ESPN. And as always, on the ESPN app. The Cavs, if they play defense like the Bucks, they'd be all right. Instead right now, they, they don't want to play defense again. They trade the whole team to try to get better at defense. Meanwhile, defensive battle here for the first time. ETSU showed a little bit of pressure. Alonzo is off the floor after picking up his second. Who do the Spartans turn to? Dickey getting deep. Gives it up. And a beautiful pass and a dump off to Kuiper. When you get that deep in the paint, you force the defense to have to step and react in a beautiful dump off that time. Shot clock is at eight. Sante Bradford, the Southpaw, player of the year. Shot clock at three. Gives it up. Three ball. And Dickey's got it with a 15 second. I think you go for two for one here. Push the ball up the floor, and no, now you're not going to do that, but. Ooh. Offensive foul, Marvin Smith sent his defender to the ground. Uh, Wes Miller in disbelief. He ran into a wall by the name of Kuiper. Smith was coming off that screen, and Kuiper dropped him. So not only does the Spartans not get a two for one. They don't even get a shot off. And now ETSU can close out the half with the final four. Multiple subs coming in, including Peter Jerkin, who returned for ETSU. Malik Massey entered for UNCG. And Kanayo Obiwapu has also re-entered. Remember, he had an ankle injury in the first half. Shot clock off here in the first half. Pressure. McLeod leaves his feet, finds a man. 
No whistle there. Obi Rapu on the floor finds it. McLeod with a dish. Obi Rapu, no. Jerkins couldn't squeeze it. Five on the clock and a loose ball over the end line. Three and a half seconds left in the half. Well, they say pinball's coming back. That was a heck of a pinball possession. When did pinball ever not exist? Well, like Wes in Miller's, popularity. I don't know, but Wes Miller's emotions are pinballing around. This game matters. That's what I love about coming to these conference tournaments. Every single moment, every single possession can make the difference. Maybe see. it's this one. Hodges missed the layup. One more look is rejected. And that's how the half ends on a defensive stand. Go figure. That's what we had for the first 20 minutes of this one. A one seed UNCG trying to get back to the tournament for the third time ever. ETSU trying to find its 11th appearance. We're tied at 25. Stormy Bonatoni standing by with Wes Miller. Coach, you knew this was going to be a defensive battle. What are you liking out of that side of the ball so far? Well, we're fighting. I do like our fight. I like our effort there. Um, I don't think we're playing our best on the offensive side, but give East Tennessee State some credit for that. Just pumping up Francis Alonzo over there. He's just two for nine from the floor. How do you get him more involved? He's such a good player. I was just telling him he's better than some of his errors with the ball in his hands. And then he made an error on a ball screen that I thought he shouldn't have made. He handles that kind of stuff pretty well. Thank you, Coach. All right, Stormy, thanks. 25 all at the half. UNCG shooting just 36%, ETSU 33%. The offense should pick up in the second half. Chris Cotter, Jay Williams, and Seth Greenberg back in the studio. We'll be back with our Audi Halftime Report right after this. One of the A-list stars is going to need to show up here in the second half. Well, C. Forbes is hoping to get his team back to the NCAA tournament. Moments ago, he addressed his team in the locker room. We had a camera in there. I was to ask you on June 22nd. Okay, we're going to be sitting here on March, what is today? Sixth. Sixth. And you're 20 minutes away from going to the NCAA tournament. You're tied up. How would you feel? We were down eight last year. We we're down eight last year. Okay? We're in great shape. We just got to go kick the door in, okay? Let's go kick the door in. Let's go. Who won it? 20 minutes left in their season to keep it going and make it to the NCAA tournament. See if they can kick the door in. Again, they're playing in the SOCON title game for the third consecutive season. They've won this tournament seven times on their way to 10 NCAA tournaments in ETSU history. They've all come in bunches. They won four straight from 89 to 92. Back to back 0304, back to back 2009, 2010. That's a great job by McLeod to drive straight into the body of Dickey as he rotated over in the help side position. If you try to avoid the shot blocker, what most of the time you do is you actually allow the shot blocker a cleaner ability to block the shot. Magic Johnson came in in 1997, right before the NCAA tournament, and talked about getting into the shot blocker's body. Whether it's your knee or your shoulder, go right into his chest. Can't block your shot there, most of the time it's going to break his arms down and foul you. Or you just throw up a running sky hook. That works too. Well, that worked for Magic because he was 6'9". Mm -hmm. Another one coming for Jalen McLeod, not 6'9". McLeod knocks them both down. Two-point lead for ETSU. With Burrell not in the lineup back out on the floor because of that injury that he sustained in the first half, Payne starts the second half. Ball fake and a three. That's short, the track downs. And Alonzo gets cut off. Another opportunity, Marvin Smith off the mark and a whistle. Well, David Burrell left, as you mentioned, with that ankle injury in the first half. For more, here's Stormy. I asked Steve Forbes if we can expect to see him again, and he said he's going to try it. This game is for the NCAA tournament. If he can, he will. If he can't, he won't. Going to keep working it out a little bit, but he wants to go. Back on the bench, and the trainer says, let's walk it around a little bit. Remember, he left, I told you this before, he left for a moment. In last night's semifinal game due to an ankle injury but returned. And it had a sports center top 10 moment. He also got a technical for throwing down a windmill when play was dead. Yeah. 
This is really nice to watch, though. <laughs> this is an incredible dunk. I liked it. Steve Forbes, not so much. DeSante Bradford, player of the year. And it's taken down by Dickey. They gave up real estate, but they contested the shot. The scouting report attentiveness that we've seen on Bradford and Alonzo has been outstanding by both these two teams. Little leaner, and it finds home for Demetrius Troy. He is the first double-digit scorer in this game, and it takes a minute into the second half to get there. Cloud gives it up, and a foul on James Dickey, and the shot blocker will pick up his third. And that's two in the first two minutes of the second half. Armas did a very nice job, and as I said before, he carves out space. He is not a superb athlete, but what he's able to do is he gets himself deep in the paint, at least one foot in the paint at all times when he's posting up. Sets mean screens, bodies up defensively. He's really carved himself out a great niche for Steve Forbes, originally from Belgrade, Serbia. He played on the bronze medal team in the U-17 World Championships back in Dubai. That international experience has allowed him to have a much larger role this year as a freshman than I think a lot of people thought coming into the year. Dickey will take a seat with his third foul. Kyron Galloway replaces him. And like a lot of folks, you're talking about a lot in Armas, like a lot of guys in this team. Junior college transfer. Burrell is ready to re-enter this game for ETSU. Alonzo back to Kuiper. Another miss from deep for Kuiper. 35% shooter from deep, but he is now 0 for 4 from 3. Asante Bradford gets cut off. Shot clock at 5. Payne gives it up. And McLeod stepped on the sideline. Stormy was listening in to the ETSU huddle in the first half when DeZonte Bradford was asked by Steve Forbes which way he wanted to go. He said, I want to go right. Steve Forbes said, no, no, they're going to know you want to go right. Go left. Well, mind games with his star and with the scouting report on the other side. Bradford still quiet, only five points. He averages 15 and a half a game, had 20 last night. In the yep. semifinal win. It just you look at that last possession though, and you see where Marvin Smith was on the catch. I mean, literally right in his back pocket. They're not giving him any space to operate. One of the things Bradford does a nice job of is curling off the of screens going towards the basket. He's been unable to get that downhill momentum. Morrell helping out. He just re-entered after the ankle injury. Sloppy basketball and a hold after the turnover. And that's gonna go against ETSU. Jermaine Long commits his first. This is what Champ Week is all about. Two teams, the two best teams in the SoCon, playing for their rightful spot of being the champion of this conference and going to the NCAA tournament. Troy got pressured into a bad luck. This is the third time they meet this season. They met three times last season. There are no secrets between these two teams. Well, Bradford's hobbling back up the floor. Burrell's already limping. If Bradford goes down, oh, it'll be really difficult at the offensive end. Alonzo got his hands on it. Once again, the shot clock in single digits. Deep three. Draws iron, but that's it. Shoved up there by Devontavious Payne. And Bradford's going to foul on purpose because he needs to take himself out of the game. Well, this is... Could be a debilitating injury for ETSU. 
They've been on the verge of greatness in the postseason numerous times, only to lose their stars. They could have had one of the best upsets ever, a 16 versus a 1 in 1989 against Oklahoma. Mookie Blaylock, Stacy King, when their star, Keith Mr. Jennings, fouled out on a terrible call, Sean Farnham, with 121 to go, trying to guard Mookie Blaylock. I watch it today. They completely miss it. Keith Jennings should have been in the game still. Kuiper for three. But Bradford goes to the bench, and all of a sudden the offense gets a little bit better. As much as we talk about his offense, he's named player of the year because he plays both ends of the floor. McLeod in the trees, nothing doing. This is the moment if you're UNCG that you've got to capitalize with Bradford on the bench. He's about to get retaped. McLeod makes contact, that's his second. <laughs> Athletic training staff keeping a close eye on the player of the year, DeSante Bradford in his left ankle. Will he return for ETSU? The presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Reese's Peanut Butter Cups. Reach for Reese's. Dezonte Bradford, the senior from Humble, Tennessee, is getting worked on by their head athletic trainer, Brett Lewis, for ETSU. This is the player of the year, and here's how the injury occurred. And Tom, it's friendly fire. He steps on his own teammate's foot as, he dri as the drive comes in. Look at that left ankle right there. Steps on Armis's foot as he goes to wall up defensively. It doesn't lessen the effect. But what it does lessen is the ability for ETSU to do everything that it wants, defensively or offensively, because now the adjustments can be made defensively for UNCG. Now you don't have to worry about the conference play of the year on the offensive end of the floor. Changes your matchups, allows you to help and sag a little bit more to try to protect the paint. He is the only four-year senior. There's a lob he predicted in the first half, but no finish. Back out to Kuiper, and he's hit back-to-back -back threes. UNCG has opened up its largest lead, the Spartans, by five. Jerkin helps break the press. We know what DeZonte Bradford brings to the team on both ends of the floor. Who's the scoring option now for ETSU? It's got to be Payne. Payne number 11. He's the guy that's got to elevate his game and get involved here offensively. McLeod walled off. Shot clock at two. Burrell gives it up. And a shot clock violation by UNCG's defense. Look, Tom, it is a 6-0-1 with Bradford on the bench. And here he comes checking back into the game right now. He gets retaped and quickly enters back in for Steve Forbes. Six-nothing run since Bradford left the floor. ETSU's been without a bucket for three-plus minutes. Alonzo off the screen. Gets deep. No shot. They're going to call that on the floor. Now, here's what I would do if I was UNCG. I would find out who Bradford's guarding, and I would test that ankle. He's on Marvin Smith. He was guarding Alonzo for a good chunk of the second half. One of the reasons Alonzo's having an off night. Smith gives it back to Kuiper. He was feeling it. Long got high to bring that one down. Bradford whistled for a double dribble. He turns it over on his first possession since re-entering. In this scenario, if you're DeSante Bradford, mentally, how does that injury affect you? Well, I mean, it depends on the level of pain that he's in. You know, sprained ankles are tricky. Now, obviously, he was in enough pain where he wanted to get himself out of the game, but you've got to get past that right now. First five and a half minutes of this half, ETSU does not have a field goal. Only three free throws. Reach in on Long. He is shocked, but that's his third. Fifth team foul.
UNCG led this game at half last year. ETSU came back to win it. Dickey forces it inside. It's stripped away. And we've got four seconds on the shot clock with Miller with the reach in. Really good swarming defense once again by the Bucs. But it's been, their defense has been solid. Look, you've given up 33 points in 26 minutes of play. It's been their offense that has let them down. They've got to find some easier looks. Payne drifts back for the triple. What'd you think of that look? I'm okay with that look. I would have preferred him to shot fake, elevate, and then drive to the basket. East Tennessee State ice cold here in the second half. Troy finds Dickey. And then Devontavious Payne commits his third. UNCG will be in the bonus in the next foul. Dickey going to the jump hook and there's that next foul Bo Hodges commits his second it's been a long season Sean it's been a long tournament what role is fatigue playing on both sides especially this defensive end there cannot be any fatigue in your body or your mind right now you are 13 and a half minutes away from clinching a bid to the NCAA tournament for one of these two teams. So from a fatigue factor right now, nothing. Both teams have played the same amount of games. Both players on all these rosters, they played the same amount of minutes they played all season long over those last three games. First two points of the night for James Dickey come from the free throw line. Last five minutes for East Tennessee State, scoreless with three turnovers. Bradford breaks it. Here's Payne. The player of the year leaves it short. Three on three. Miller's going to push. And he gets a foul on Bradford with the trip. The take it to Vegas later on tonight. It's the West Coast Conference Championship semifinal. BYU against St. Mary's on ESPN2. Hey, look at that game, BYU-St. Mary's. The Gales beat them twice this year in the regular season. They swept them. Jock Landell, if you have not watched him, he's one of the best players in all of college basketball. He's one of the ten finalists for the Wooden Award. Leads the Gales in points, rebounds, and field goal percentage. Not just the Gales, but the, the WCC. He's a tremendous talent. They play everything through him for round one. A really good, efficient offense for the Gales. But they struggled the other night against Pepperdine. They dubbed themselves a hole where they were down 17 to 4 early in that game. They do the same thing tonight against BYU. BYU will win. By the way, in the other semifinal over on ESPN, Gonzaga is putting it to San Francisco, 75 to 51. And they got depth on depth. Killian Tilly with a huge one tonight, 26 points. People forget about how much talent Mark Few's team returned from last year. 10-0 run for UNCG. ETSU has been scoreless for five minutes plus. McLeod forced two, and Isaiah Miller tracks it down. You can play the greatest defense in the world, partner, but if you can't score the basketball, can't win. We are almost eight minutes in here in the second half, and the Bucks have not made a single shot. That won't end yet. And then a foul on the rebound. Go against Dickey. That is his fourth. Fourth foul on Dickey. He will go to the bench. That takes out a lot of the shot blocking ability for the Spartans. So if you're ETSU, this is your opportunity to drive, get some fouls, attack, stop shooting perimeter three-point shots over the top. McLeod 
follows his own miss and puts it back in. And that's exactly what I was talking about. They'll get downhill right now. Dickey's on the bench. Kuiper is not a shot blocker. First made field goal this half for the Buccaneers. Galloway, three, short. And get it go. Go. Don't stop. The cloud. Got another. Here they go. Alonzo. And a missed opportunity for the Spartans. ETSU fighting their way back into this thing. They've had no life at the offensive end of the floor. The shot blocker goes to the sideline, and McLeod says, you know what? I see open opportunities to get to the rim. Comfortable, confident, strong. That's more what the Bucks need. In and with it, a berth to the NCAA tournament, and both offenses have picked it up in the second half. Well, some key moments have started here. Bradford sprains his ankle. He goes to the bench to get it fixed. Back in it now, but while he was gone, it was a 6-0 run that created separation for the Spartans. Even on broken plays, Kuiper was able to get it in from outside. The three-point shot made a difference, but now with Dickey on the bench, McLeod and the Bucks are going to the rim, attacking, doing what they do best, and it's just a five-point game. So now, after a long ETSU drought, it's UNCG that's been scoreless the last 425. Kuiper loses it. No travel call. Stormy Bonatoni was listening into the ETSU huddle. Stormy, what'd you hear? Well, first, Steve Forbes gave McLeod some, some love, said good job, but then he told the rest of the group, you're letting offense mess you up all over. Be aggressive, but be smart. He was disappointed with the rebounding effort, said you need to rebound with two hands. He said, get some strikes. Three strikes, they're out. We can win this, but you got to be in charge. I agree 100%. Great job, Stormy. But Steve Forbes and the message to his team is they've got to be tougher. And a prime example of what Stormy was just talking about was on that possession. There's a loose ball, and the first player to it is wearing a white jersey. When there's two blue jerseys around them, they're anticipating that they were going to grab it so they could leak out and run in transition. There is no leaking out when you're down five. And 11 minutes left to go and essentially elimination game to see who gets to the NCAA tournament. Here's UNCG star Francis Alonzo, first team all-conference performer. Got one more coming. The foul is on ETSU star DeZonte Bradford with his third. Francis Alonzo has a lot of international experience. The under-18 Euros with Spain, the under-19 FIBA championships, the under-20 Euros. Last year had a chance at a game-tying three at the buzzer in this game. It rimmed out. And East Tennessee State went to the NCAA tournament instead of UNCG. It was heartbreak for Wes Miller and his squad. He said, we know what it's like to go down the mountain feeling poorly. They want to be king of the mountain tonight. McLeod. He's been the catalyst in the second half. Bo Hodges. That cut off. Great defense by Marvin Smith. Well, Hodges should have distributed that ball. That was far too difficult of a layup to try to make. Massey comes around the screen. Nice touch. First bucket this half for Malik Massey, and UNCG's lead is back to eight. Slow in the help side rotation. Those are the details that need to get cleaned up. But great recognition by Massey that time to see that nobody was sliding over. If somebody slides over, that's when you pass. If they don't, take the layup. Meanwhile, the 1-2-2 two, two has slowed down ETSU. Whoa! Follow jam is there! David Burrell goes high! We've got a six-point game! It's amazing how quick that ankle heals. Ankle doesn't hurt when you're hanging in the air, does it? It doesn't when it comes to him. 
The drive by Bradford. Defense goes to pinch and help. Nobody puts a body on number two. That's a mistake because he can flat out fly. What a finish. Meanwhile, Jalen McLeod commits his third personal. Foul trouble abounds for East Tennessee State and a free throw trip for Malik Massey, sophomore from Charlotte out of West Charlotte High School and a New Hampton prep. This is what Massey, or pardon me, this is what Burrell does so well. Ride the motorcycle. <laughs> <laughs> he goes full throttle after that. Oh. See if that ignites his teammates, though. There's not been a lot of energy plays for the Buccaneers. When they have energy, and when they're swarming all over the floor, good things happen. Seven of the last nine points for UNCG have come from the free throw line. Bradford has yet to score this half. The league's player of the year. Payne gives it inside to Armis. And a foul on post defense on Kuiper. Speaking of rising, how about David Burrell last night in the semis? This is just silly. I mean, just silly. Climb the ladder, lock it up, whatever you want to say. The bench was losing their mind. Sports Center lost their mind. They made it number four in the top ten. Sean, tell everybody what happened on the possession before. He got a windmill dunk after a foul had already been called. On the other end of the floor. He dribbled all the way down and did a windmill dunk. <laughs> and that will get you a technical, even it will get you some oohs and ahs. It was really nice, though. <laughs> did Steve Forbes cover his mouth after that call? Uh, I believe that he did. It's one of the best things Steve Forbes does, is the mouth cover. Where did he learn that one? Uh, <laughs> Not from me. I never cover my mouth. I just keep talking. Yeah. Massey commits his second. Nine seconds on the shot clock. Last year, by the way, Mary oh, me, free throw coming. Last year, ETSU had Merriweather in the dunk contest. He was a high flyer, got all the way to the finals. He was my pick. I thought he was going to win. Then he didn't really make a dunk in the finals. It was very disappointing for me. Burrell should be there this year in San Antonio. Well, you know people. You're working the event. Pull some strings. I'll be sitting on my couch. I'll call Intersport. 6'6 <laughs> six, six junior from Milwaukee can get up. Meanwhile, DeSante Bradford still scoreless this half. Second in the league, pardon me, third in the league in scoring at 15 and a half a game. That's a turnover going to the Bucks. Alonzo dribbled it off of his foot. He's had a tough couple of games. He had a game winner last night with 20 seconds left. A three for UNCG as he knocked off Wofford. They held player of the year Fletcher McGee to just 14 points on 16 attempts. The thing about that, they had three looks in the final 10 seconds, and all of them were great looks. Yes, Wofford did. Remember, Wofford's a team that won at North Carolina this season. They just win. They had a big win. They also knocked off Georgia Tech. UNCG has a couple big wins in their pocket. They knocked off North Carolina State. That's got Wes Miller dancing. What kind of dancing would he do tonight if they can hold on to this eight-point lead? ETSU just three of 14 from three in this game. Meanwhile, UNCG not much better, but a foul on Burrell. That's the first in the high flyer. The difference right now in this game is the ability to get to the free throw line. UNCG has manufactured points at the free throw line. They are 7 of 8. This is going to be their 10th attempt here in the second half. Meanwhile, only 5 attempts for ETSU. And look at the last possession, a prime example of it. You drive, instead of getting the foul and the contact for Bradford and getting him to the free throw line, he kicks out to a three-point shooter. Long, just a 24% three-point shooter. 
I'd rather have Bradford try to get the contact in the paint than kick the ball out to somebody that shoots 24% from beyond the arc. That's just me. Well, here's Jordy Kuyper at the free throw line. Senior from Groningen in the Netherlands. He's got one more free throw coming his way. Spartans fans can thank Jordy Kuyper for Francis Alonso being on the roster. They played in some European events because Kuyper played at the Canarias Base, uh, Basketball Academy in Spain. Well, Kuyper this year's field goal percentage has dropped 14%. But his three-point shot has increased by 5%. We've seen that tonight. He's been really good from beyond the arc, not so good inside of it. So he's not the dunking Dutchman, he's the shooting Dutchman. Yeah. At least this year he is. And there's a trip in the line coming, just as you predicted. DeSante Bradford, the player of the year, will be there when we return. But first, let's get you back to the studio. Here's Chris Cotter. Big South, maybe we got more in this SoCon. Let's take a look at the Capital One fan vote. Here's the question tonight. Which top seed is most likely to win its league tournament? Arizona, Auburn, KU, Virginia, or Xavier? Sean Farnham, what do you think? Arizona. Oh, they're, they're playing with a little bit of emotion, a little, <laughs> little drama out there. Uh, you know, just a little bit. The coach has got an edge to him right now, DeAndre Ayton. In, in my opinion, Wooden Award winner. I mean, he's the freshman of the year and the MVP tonight. He was named by the Pac-12. He is the most dominating presence on the court, and he's playing angry. He's playing mad. And Alonzo Trier is back. Ugh. I'm telling you, the Pac-12 is down. Arizona is still up. The Wildcats win in Vegas. Just when you thought nuclear winter was setting in, the sun is shining bright on Arizona. It'll come back this other way after Bradford goes one of two from the free throw line. Champ Week is just such a ph phenomenal viewing pleasure. I mean, sit in the Lazy Boy, drop it back, and enjoy the show this week on ESPN. The stories and the faces that you're going to be no talking about for the next three weeks are told this week. Alonzo leaves it short. And then a push. That's the third on Galloway, and we'll have free throws the rest of the way on both sides. You and I, partner, we'll be both in St. Louis for the SEC tournament. So much to be determined in St. Louis this year. As wide open as a field as we've seen. Who's your favorite in the SEC? Uh, most consistently, the best team that's been most consistent, Tennessee. Tennessee has been the most consistent team in the SEC. Auburn, because of their lack of interior presence, I'm still concerned, even though I love what Bruce Pearl's guards can do. Harper, Brown, Mustafa Heron. That, that trio is as good as a trio as you're going to find in the SEC. And then there's always Kentucky. I know they got thumped on Saturday on the road at Florida. But they've won four out of the last five games that they played. And they get that by all the way through to Friday. Pressure. And we got a double dribble. There's a backcourt violation on Troy after it was established in the front court, and ETSU with an opportunity turning the tables on UNCG with the pressure. Sante Bradford has made his way to the free throw line the last couple of possessions for the Buccaneers. He is hiding top right of your screen. Number one in navy blue. Here he is. Give it up to Armis instead. Payne. Bradford. Back 
They don't get it back to the player of the year. They try to force it inside. Isaiah Miller! Finger roll! That is a very poor decision by McLeod that led to that easy layup for the Spartans. Make the simple play. That entry pass wasn't there. And another turnover. This time it was Bradford who lost it. Well, that could have been a game breaker, but the rebound right back into the hands of Miller. Freshman point guard will try to set it up, and they'll use some clock. Miller gives it up. Where was he going? Jalen McLeod. Another burst from McLeod. He's got 12. It's a six-point game. Early three. Aggressive. Picked back up by Smith, and then he's fouled by Bradford. That is number four, and DeSante Bradford. Well, it's been defense has been the story all night. This entry pass, it's just not there. Miller was cheating it all the way, read it brilliantly, and able to finish. But then on the next possession, where are you driving the basketball? Out of bounds? That doesn't work so well. McLeod able to get it, finishes through traffic. They're going to leave DeSante Bradford on the floor. No, they're not. He's coming out now after his fourth personal foul. The question is, how long do you sit the conference player of the year? If you can get him to the four-minute mark and put him back in, but if you're Steve Forbes, you can't allow this game to get away from you. 21 fouls combined called in this half, and UNCG is trying to take advantage of it. They've built their lead to eight. Payne has been quiet this half. And McLeod will go to the free throw line after the reach in. McLeod has been the mo by far the most aggressive player on the floor here in the second half for ETSU. He's got to continue to attack downhill. McLeod. Played in the NCAA tournament with Texas Southern last year. He played against some big-time competition. If you know Mike Davis and the way he schedules in the non-conference, you wouldn't be surprised. They played the likes last year of Arizona, Louisville, TCU, Cincinnati, Baylor. Eventually lost to North Carolina in the NCAA tournament as Alonzo returns. you got to be able to knock down a free throw, though, when you get there. 74% on the season. Another one coming his way. He is 2 for 4 from the line tonight. TSU is going to show a little bit of pressure again. They'll pick him up just before midcourt. So McLeod has been the offense of the second half. He goes to the bench. They're without Bradford on the floor right now. Dickey steps through. Boy, he got close. First field goal of the night for James Dickey. Well, he had 5'11 Jason Williams on him. Near steal, nothing doing. Numbers if they want it. Williams kicks Burrell for three. It's been an ugly night behind the arc for East Tennessee State. They are three for 15. Dickey, Drew Iron, Kuiper with the offensive putback. How important has Kuiper been tonight? Every time they've needed a bucket, every time they've looked for separation, it's been Kuiper. He's got 11. And it's the largest lead of the tournament for UNCG. Looking for just their third ever NCAA appearance. Troy's third foul. Well, here's the mismatch. You have a foot advantage in size. Armist needed to step over earlier to try to help out. This time defensively, 
Good job by Armis, but then a poor box out on Kuiper. Nobody even touched him. It's a lost art in rebounding. Everybody wants to ball watch and use athleticism. Make contact with somebody. Create space, then go get the ball. Miladin Armis, freshman from Serbia, has another one coming. Kuiper from the Netherlands has 11. You and I in the offseason, we're going to go visit Groningen, Netherlands, all right? Population about 200,000, great museums, a university town, Sean. You paying? No, I got Sky Miles. All right, let's go. See, you can't go 50% from the free throw line if you're the Bucks, And that's what they've done too frequently here in the second half. Dickey draws a foul with 11 seconds on the shot clock. It's a first on Armas. That'll put James Dickey at the free throw line. It's a career night for Jordy Kuyper in a lot of ways, Stormy. Yes, and Steve Forbes says that he is one of their leaders. He brings emotional leadership and sets the tone for this team's approach and focus. Has been extremely pleased with Jordy Kuyper all season long and proud of what he's been able to do. Season high 16 points came against Samford. He's got 11 tonight. He's hit a couple of big threes in this half. That offensive putback was monster. Dickey goes one of two from the line. And Wes Miller's squad has stepped up with their star Alonzo struggling. Kuiper and Troy. Oh, oh, wow, to the band. James Dickey just sent it to the trombones. Eleven point lead. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Principal. Investments, retirement, insurance, and Pizza Hut. No one out pizzas the hut. Well, if you're going to make it to the big dance, you better show off some dance moves. That's what John Beeline and Michigan did. Big Ten tournament champs. That was fantastic. How about Lipscomb? Let's start the party here. It's time for them to dance for the first time ever as they win the A-Sun. We flash you back to December 16th after winning against NC State, the former North Carolina Tar Heel. Wes Miller showed off his moves. How would you grade it? Uh, this is where it started going to a whole nother level, partner. <laughs> You go with the double fist pull down. You, can you imagine the dance moves that we might see tonight? If his team can hold on here. Bucket inside for Bo Hodges, his first field goal. And a timeout taken by Wes Miller. 338 remaining, a trip to the tournament on the line for Wes Miller and the Spartans. All right, Connor, thanks. Back here in Asheville, UNC Greensboro, trying to get back to the NCAA tournament for just the third time in school history. Wes Miller's your two-time SOCON Coach of the Year. His athletic director, Kim Record, hired him as the youngest coach in Division I college basketball. I said, what did you see from Wes Miller when you decided to hire him? Well, she first noticed him when she was at Florida State as an associate athletic director. Wes Miller, in his very first start for Roy Williams in North Carolina, hit six threes in his first start against Florida State. She said, who is this guy that's tearing up my Seminoles? Lo and behold, she ends up hiring him years later. Well, and it's that same kind of crazy belief in basketball and passion that he showed as a player that has made him a good coach. She stuck through him. They were patient. They gave him time to build the program as Dickey converts inside, even though both will tell you that mistakes were made early on in his very young coaching career, specifically how to build a program, how to get guys, get players that are right fit, not just for your program, 
but for the school itself. Well, it's just not about talent. It's about the culture of the program that you're trying to build. And right now, they're three minutes away from going to the NCAA tournament. They lost the title game last year. They had to make the drive back down the Blue Ridge Mountains, back to Greensboro, knowing they missed an opportunity. No miss inside for Dickey. And UNCG has its largest lead of the night, up 13. They've only been to the tournament twice before, 96 in 2001. McLeod fouled by Alonzo. Wes Miller took over a team that was 2-14. And, and he turned them around his first season. He's now in his seventh year. He's been there that long now in his seventh season as a head coach. Assistant coaching stops for Ernie Nestor at Elon. And then Scott Cherry at High Point before he came to UNCG as an assistant. And he is a competitor. He is a hoop head. He is a basketball nerd. He said, my wife kind of drives her crazy. Ashley knows all I do is basketball. I go home, I listen to Sean Farnham talk SEC hoops, turn on another game and another game. Well, it's paid off in a big, big way. I mean, this program, over the last two years, we mentioned it, most successful back-to-back -back seasons they've ever had. Set a school record for single-season wins last year. They do it again this year. The only thing lacking on the resume is an NCAA tournament appearance. And I know Kim Record, his boss, doesn't want us discussing it, but boy, he's going to look awfully impressive to some major programs that are looking to make hires in the coaching department. He has the pedigree, he has the background, and he's been proven now to be able to build a program up to the level in which he has. And, he, and, and I love his demeanor, the shoot arounds, the way he talks to his team. He's a very impressive coach. You asked him about that topic earlier today at Shootaround. He said, listen, I grew up in Greensboro. I know the city. I love it. My dad lives 10 minutes away. My wife is from three hours away. And he can afford to be picky if that's what you want to talk about because he has all of these guys outside of Marvin Smith and Jordy Kuyper returning. If the right thing's not on his plate, come back and win again. Their team will be better next year. And that's scary for everybody in the SoCon because they were outstanding this year. Another one coming for Kuiper. Out of Groningen in the Netherlands. He's got 13. The lead is 13. This is where you've got to start turning up. If you're the Bucks, you've got to drive, you've got to stop the clock, you've got to go to the free throw line, you've got to make shots, you've got to turn them over. A lot of things have to go right for your team right now. Payne dumps it off, Armis bucket and a timeout. It is an 11 point game with 2.04 to go. Back to Asheville in a moment. Sports Center after San Francisco, Gonzaga with Kenny Mayne and Steve Levy tonight at 11 p.m. Eastern following San Francisco versus Gonzaga, as I mentioned. It's another buzzer beater tonight. We'll look at the best buzzer beaters in college hoops this season. Plus, what change for LeBron and the Cavs defensively tonight? How Cleveland bounced back in the NFL Combine's final day? Whose stock went up the most and whose stock fell? Sports Center at night. 11 p.m. Eastern on ESPN and the ESPN app. So it started seven minutes ago. Yeah, but you're we... missing it. <laughs> <laughs> well, don't change the channel. No, stay you here. Cut with the us. nets here. Somebody is going to cut down the nets, and right now it looks like it's going to be the Spartans. That was a tradition started by a Southern Conference coach, Everett Case, when he was a head coach at NC State. They won the SoCon in 1947. They claimed the nets as a souvenir, and the tradition continues. Troy! That does it for three and a dagger. They worried about the runner-up trophy that's been sitting in the office. I don't think they're going to have to worry about that one this year. They're going to be able to replace it with a championship trophy. Wes Miller began his playing career at James Madison University, spent one year there, decided he wanted more. He walked on at the University of North Carolina, won a national championship with the Tar Heels, and worked his way into Carolina fans' hearts, and now he's doing the same with the Spartans. 
With 1.15 to go, the SOCOP Player of the Year, Kasate Bradford, the senior from Humboldt, Tennessee, is fouled out. One more coming from Marvin Smith. Bradford done eight points and an ankle injury and not the championship he had in mind. The frustration, and there's two stories to this game. One is the elation right now for UNCG. The other one is the heartbreak for the Bucks and for Bradford, who a year ago got a taste of the NCAA tournament, so desperately wanted to get back for another trip. A travel call. Fantastic defense by Jordy Kuyper. Unfortunately for Kuyper, his dad came over from the Netherlands for senior day, but had to go back just like Alonzo's family, flying back to Spain as we speak. Kuyper gives it up. Here's Alonzo. They've done it tonight, Sean, without a dominating performance from the best player, Francis Alonzo. That just tells you the depth in which the Spartans have. The best player didn't bring his A game tonight. He struggled because the defense that ETSU played on him. With that being said, other guys stepped up. Troy, Kuyper, Dickey. Shot clock violation and UNCG just 36 seconds away from their third ever trip to the NCAA tournament. Wes Miller went as a player he'll be going back as a coach and that's the thing for both these coaches they talked about steve forbes mentioned to us he said last year was all about the players and their ability to celebrate the moment they worked so hard for it uncg had to watch the bucks do it last year there'll be no watching this year the socon champs 15 seconds from the tournament and they will dribble it out and for just the third time ever, there will be dancing in Greensboro tonight. Wes Miller, it's okay. You can smile. <laughs> you can celebrate. For the first time as a head coach, you're going dancing, my friend. Tom, it's a goosebump moment for me, just sitting here. I know what it feels like to be in the tournament. These guys are about to learn what it's like to be in the NCAA tournament. It is fantastic, it is special, it is never taken for granted. It took a buzzer beater to get him there the last time in 2001. This one was decided well before the final horn. After last night's semifinal, Wes Miller said, we know what it's like to go down the mountain feeling poorly. His wife, Ashley, and Wes embrace it mid-court alongside A.D. Kim Record. They'll go down the mountain, kings of the mountain after this SOCON title. Wes Miller did it as a player, and now he has done it as a coach. Let him in love on this for a minute. He is celebrating with Marvin Smith Jr. His seniors go into the dance. Wes is standing by coach, with Stormy. Coach, after losing to this very team on this very court one year ago, can you explain the feeling you felt when that finer buzzer went off? I can't probably explain it. I'm just so proud. I'm so proud. I'm so proud to coach these guys. Understandably very emotional. You're from Greensboro. You love the town. To be the coach with these players, to bring UNCG a championship and head to the NCAA tournament for the first time in 17 years, can you put that into words? It's going to take me some time to process it. Um, I'm just overwhelmed with emotion right now. Seeing them like that celebrating. Uh, it's just really special. Well deserved. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. 
Hey, Fred. Francis. So the dancing begins for UNCG. Francis Alonzo hugs his coach. He was recruited from Spain. His family is flying back to Europe as we speak. Let's hope they get ESPN2 on the plane. Spartans are going dancing. The party begins in Greensboro. Let's get you back to the studio to get you caught up with all the latest in sports action. Good night from the SOCON Tournament in Asheville, North Carolina.